What's up guys and welcome back. Today, as you can see by the, the description of this video, we are going to be working on our trailer that we're gonna be converting into a camper. Um, so short story on this is we bought this trailer back in like June, July uh, with the intentions of basically converting it into a camper. It's something that I've kind of wanted to do for a while. We've always enjoyed uh, tent camping as a family. Um, you know, a lot of our friends go tent camping with us. And obviously as our family grows, you know, tent camping gets to be kind of a pain. Uh, we have lots of stuff. And so we kind of wanted uh, a camper that we can store all of our camping equipment. And anytime we want to go, we can just pick up and go. Um, you know, with the dog and the kids, it's just, it's a lot easier. So like I said, it's something I've wanted to do for a while um, and we just we happened to come across this trailer uh, a good friend of mine was it was actually parked in his backyard for like the last five years uh, it's a 14 foot I believe yeah 14 foot uh, by seven feet wide uh, tandem axle trailer it's it's a pretty heavy duty trailer should be big enough uh, to suit our needs um, we actually dug this out of it was kind of sitting in the woods behind his house and so when we dug this thing out it was completely covered with moss and and that in fact a lot of the caulking and stuff was dried out and so it was leaking water in and so the floor got rotted out and so what i did after we picked it up was i ripped up the floor you know pulled the walls out of it it was just like wood paneling walls uh and it just kind of stunk in here so i replaced the floor i kind of rust proofed the underneath the frame and everything and we used it a couple times this year just to basically sleep in. We put an air mattress in it, uh, just something just to sleep in. Um, and I've been meaning to get to this, but I just haven't with the, you know, we were building the truck all summer and we just started working on Jordan's uh, Mustang. So uh, we kind of had some free time this weekend and I've been slowly collecting stuff. I was able to get some uh, windows out of a, an old camper. Uh, I think it was like a, the guy said it was like a 2011 Jayco camper so i got those i want to get those installed uh, i got a i picked up a nice 2000 watt pure sign power inverter um, so i'm going to use that to power like a refrigerator and then everything else i'm pretty much going to run off of 12 volt you know all my lighting um i'm going to probably do uh, a 110 outlet for charging phones and stuff like that but most of my stuff is going to be powered off 12 volt um yeah, I want to keep it pretty simple. I don't want to go crazy. Um, we don't need anything super fancy. So we're going to probably do like shiplap on the walls. I'm going to build some cabinets, have a little kitchen with a small sink and stuff like that. But uh, other than that, I need to figure something out for the uh, bed. I want basically, you know, to kind of save space, I want to make something that, you know, the bed kind of folds down and then we're not using it. We can fold it up. Um, but I'm still kind of trying to figure that out. But what I want to do today for sure is I want to get the uh, holes for the windows cut out so we can get the windows installed and we can start insulating because that's kind of the first thing we need to do before we start doing anything else. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right, so what I did was I traced our, my window out onto this piece of cardboard. And so the one, what I'm gonna do is cut it out. That way I can put it up against the trailer and then I can trace a line all the way around that we can just go ahead and cut out and the window should fit in real nice.
right, so we got the first window installed, and that wasn't too bad. All we did was just kind of measured the rough width or the height of the window, cut those two studs short, and then we cut the out, you know, cut an opening for the window to fit into, and then we just kind of built a window frame around it. And then basically how these windows work is they have this little um, like lock ring that goes around the outside. So then when you push the windows in, you put this, this ring on and then screw it to the window and it kind of squeezes it in, in that frame. So fits real nice. Right now I just have a couple screws holding it in. It's just kind of in there temporarily because I want to actually caulk the outside of it and then reinstall it but since it's there's snow on top of the trailer and it's running down the side so I want to wait until uh, everything's dry so I'll wait for a dry day to, to you know do the final install on the window but you know I wanted to at least get it installed so that I can go ahead and uh, insulate around it um, so I think the next step is we're gonna go ahead and get the other window installed on the other wall and then we can start insulating all right so change of plans Originally, I wanted to put this window on the other side wall, um, but I think it would look really good on this back door. Um, plus, our bed is gonna be at the back of the trailer here, and so I kinda want a, a window next to the bed. Um, so I may still put another, I may look for another window this week, see if I can find one to put on the other wall. I'm still thinking about it, but, um, I think this window will look good on this back back door. So we're gonna go ahead and do that instead. So we got the back window temporarily installed, kind of like the other one. I still want to go ahead and caulk around uh, the inside of the window before I put it in permanently uh, and then get some <clears throat> longer screws for the inside. Um, but again, looks pretty good. It seems like it's a little crooked, but it's actually level with the door. The door itself is about of a quarter, quarter or a half an inch kind of sagging to this side. Um, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but there's a little bit of a bigger gap over here than there is over here. I may try and straighten that out uh, later on, but so I kind of made it level with the door. That way when I straighten it out, uh, it'll look a little straighter. So, so that's about all I have time for today. Tomorrow I'm going to come back out and I'm going to go ahead and start insulating the inside of this thing. And then we can kind of start actually laying out how you know, I want everything, where I want my cabinets, kind of how we're gonna design the kitchen, and I gotta start uh, actually doing some wiring and stuff, so we will catch you tomorrow. All right guys, day two, it's cold and it's wet, but we got some work to do, so let's get to it.
Nicole cooked me breakfast. It's gonna be a good day. So what's really cool is I did all of that with one sheet of that foam insulation. It looks like it's way more than one sheet, but that was one sheet. All I have left is that little piece and a couple little strips. I was able to kind of, you know, once I got past this point, I was able to just kind of cut, instead of doing full sheets, because I couldn't do a full sheet here, I didn't have enough, so I just, you know, was able to cut pieces and kind of fill it in. So I think I bought six of those because I really didn't calculate how much I would need. I just kind of guessed. But by the looks of it, I should be able to finish this in the front wall with one more sheet. Honestly, I probably only need, I'd say four sheets to do the rest of this. And then all that's left after that is the ceiling which I actually have to clear all the snow off the top of this because it's condensating really badly, which once I insulate it, that'll fix that. Um, but I still, on the roof, I actually want to run some two by fours across to kind of strengthen the roof because all the roof, is, you know, all the roof is supported by is these little aluminum trusses. So yeah, let's keep moving. So one thing that I've noticed about this trailer and really all of these cargo trailers is when they build these things, they just pretty much build the frames, they just kind of throw them together. No matter how much you pay for one of these, they're always just cheaply built. Basically the spacing between the studs isn't the same from, from stud to stud or from top to bottom. So like some of these, you know, like like some of these will be like say 13 and 13 and a quarter at the top and 13 and a half at the bottom. They kind of just throw them together, staple them in, which really from a structural standpoint is fine. It doesn't really make a difference. But when you're trying to cut pieces to put in between, it's it's kind of a pain because you have to obviously compensate for that or else you'll have gaps. You know, you'll have voids at the top or voids at the bottom where it'll be too tight. In, at the bottom and loose at the top. So you kind of have to account for that whenever you're cutting this insulation. It's not really a big deal, but it takes a little bit more time because you can't just measure and just cut it real fast. You have to kind of compensate for the difference in width. But So for instance, right here, we are at 13 and 3 eighths. At the bottom, we are at 12 and three quarters. So that's over a half an inch difference between the top and the bottom. So you just kind of have to account for that when you're cutting your pieces, which is why it kind of helped over here to cut these in smaller pieces because I could cut this piece at a different size and I cut this piece, so it wasn't so bad. But it just kind of sucks when you're cutting a full sheet because you're not cutting, but everything is kind of, you know, cut at an angle, so. It's just kind of a pain, but it is what it is. You know, when they're building these things, it's like an assembly line, and they're just building them so fast, and it is just, there's no real accuracy. It's kind of annoying. But it is what it is.
Voila! Alright guys, so that is going to wrap up part one of our off-grid camper cargo trailer conversion. Uh, we got the insulation on the walls done, got the windows installed. Probably on the next video we need to reinforce our roof trusses with some 2x4s and then we got to insulate the roof. I also have to install some roof vents uh, or fans. And then after that, probably the next thing we got to do is do all of our wiring. Uh, I do want to do solar panels on the roof and I got I have a refrigerator that I'm going to wire up, uh, wire up our fans, outlets, all those things. So I'm going to actually design kind of like a schematic of how I want to wire everything up. So once again, thank you for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, and we'll catch you next time.